Hi, Cindy. A quick hello and we're good to go. Welcome to the show, Cindy Crumb. Thank you. <laughs> You've actually had that song twice before, but I changed the lyrics because uh, I changed the title of the podcast. So you get the new version. Welcome. Lovely to see you again. I love the red shirt. Looking very Gorgeous. chic. Sorry, there's a slight delay here, and you, you, the, the, the headband, and there's a Christmas tree in the background that we can't see, but we know is there. Mobile Maxi Colors on the Christmas tree. Wonderful stuff. Red shirt is for you. And the red shirt looks absolutely wonderful. It looks better on you than it does on me. Um, right, let's get going. I'm going to start off, as I always do, with a little bit of a, a brand SERP analysis. This is the CaliCube 2 tool looking at your brand set where you've got a good amount of control and it's qualitatively pretty good. You've got your Twitter boxes, you've got a lovely knowledge panel. Um, that's CaliCube measuring you in the US. I looked at you in the UK, Australia and New Zealand and it's exactly the same. Um, so you're, um, you're standardized, if I might say so, across the world. Uh, and then this is this is what I like is the knowledge panel. You've got a delightful knowledge panel, and I literally got in it a couple of weeks ago. Um, <laughs> I cheated my way in, and now you're associated with Bastian Grimm, Rand Fishkin, Marty Weintraub, who we were talking about a moment ago, and myself. These and are some I'm, favorite people. Lovely people, yeah. I, I found that the people I've got in my knowledge panel, it's you and Bill Slowski, Rand Fishkin, and Hamlet Batista. Some of my favorite people too. It's a really nice kind of uh, club. And here we have it in French. I'll bet you've never seen your knowledge panel in French, or maybe you have. I'm betting because I was hoping that you've never seen it in French. Um, and it, th this description comes from Search Y, which is a local organization. You were speaking at Search Y, which was absolutely delightful, talking about Switzerland and multilingual. Uh, problems with mixed up browsers and different language versions that all get mixed up and my head hurt a lot at the end of it. And how did you, your, your picture is different in this knowledge graph than the other one? Did you do something clever? No, uh, it's probably c completely the opposite. I probably didn't do something that I should have done. Uh, the French The French version understands me differently and I don't know why I need to figure that out. Um, Next up, I looked at your brand up in YouTube. Now, we're a covered up, so anybody watching the video will see that the version in France has got SEO Camp, which is another uh, conference that we invited you to. Um, and the similarity is just the big data interview from six years ago, which seems pretty old. So YouTube appears to be pretty out of date. Uh, and then I looked at this, because we're going to be talking about mobile moxie. And this is the segue, my incredibly brilliant segue. And I was researching it because I thought, what questions can I ask about the MOXIE score? So I looked up what is MOXIE score. Number one, this event has got the, uh, the feature snippet. Number two, there's no information about it. So I couldn't cheat sheet my way through this. So we're going to actually have to ask you, Cindy, since I couldn't find out what the MOXIE score is, what is the MOXIE score? It's new. That's why you couldn't find anything about it. It's new and exciting. We've just launched it. Um, and the idea of the Moxie score, since we're doing something similar to what CaliCube is doing, but but different, when when you put in a query with a country and a language, we get the whole SERP, mobile SERP, and we're about to add desktop SERP, mm -hmm. and we parse it. Um, and we parse everything, including ads and knowledge graph and everything that we call hosted inclusions, which is the googly stuff right. um, that you wouldn't know is there if you were just looking at Search Console, right? And, but it takes up a lot of space. So we have the Moxie score because we are trying to kind of evolve how SEOs think about their job and get it closer to this idea of SEO is marketing and it's it's branding and it's all of these things that fits well there. So we, as a company, uh, decided that like it's no longer just about tracking the rankings of one domain. That's right. not fair and that's not representative of a good job. Um, a good job 
for a brand or even for a specific product query would be for you to own that SERP, whether that, and not just ranking number one, because number one is sometimes halfway down the page. It's so SEO is changing and we want to keep up with that. So we let you claim things and save them to your brand profile. So if your, oh, Twitter, yeah, okay. if your Twitter account is there, you can claim it. Um, if uh, an article that you wrote on another domain is there, claim it. Um, if that's your knowledge graph, claim it, whatever. We let you claim anything that's on the SERP as you. And so the Moxie score is how much of this SERP is you? Um, and then we can track it over time. Did your Moxie score go up or down? Um, right. Okay. And, Sorry. And, and that's on a keyword by keyword basis. I mean, when you were saying it's similar to CaliCube, but not the same, which is a lovely yeah. phrase. Uh, CaliCube's only interested in what appears when somebody searches your brand name, whereas you're saying how much is your brand own of any given generic term? Yeah, in any country, in any language. And because those settings, as you know, are important. And I think a lot of the SEO tools are missing that hmm. detail. And we pride ourselves in being like truth and, and reality rather than aggregates and estimates. Uh, because I think like the the idea is like if your boss, if you have a ranking report or anything that says you're in position three and your boss walks in and says, no, we're not. We're in position five. I just check. We we want you to be prepared for that and not, to have to it and not have to sing and dance and like talk your way out of that because that's a really uncomfortable situation. Yeah. I mean, what, what, sorry, to, just to get in, one of the one of the hardest things is to explain to somebody yeah. when you say we're number three because uh, this tool says we're number three, explain to them that's actually number three in the blue links, but there's all this other stuff above it. Uh, and that's incredibly difficult to explain. Exactly. And so we're trying to get people an option where they can say, yes, aggregates still matter. All the, We're not trying to replace SEM Rush or the other ones we just want to have a backup because if you know your boss has this phone and searches from this location or or anyone else you know customer whatever we want you to actually know what reality looks like and not just trust the the scores that are aggregated from all places that do the search and all devices or even if they're split by mobile tablet and desktop they're yeah. you know, an aggregate an estimate and we aggregate or estimate or extrapolation and we want to get closer to a truth or a reality but the moxie score is it is the one representation where like instead of leaning on your rankings like we're ranking number one we want to give you something that you can quantify right Right, and, it, and and it's on a SERP by SERP basis, so it's result by result. Now, now um, as with all these other kind of tools, isn't there a problem of digging too deep into the details and getting lost in those details? Is there any kind of solution to that? I mean, I, brand SERPs is easy. I've just got to look at all the countries, but that's still 240 results and mobile and desktop and different languages, and that's already blown my mind. Um, how do you deal with the, the scale of it? Yeah, the... It's, it's a risk, I think, that, that you could go down the rabbit hole, but we're not trying to do this for every single keyword query, just your most important ones, just the right, ones okay. that you're working on right now or that you know are make or break. Branded SERPs are included as well as like a good idea to track. Uh, things that might be a HR risk or a public relations thing, if you're doing any kind of SEO, um, public relations and, you know, getting bad stuff out of the SERP. Um, so it's not, like I said, it's not meant to replace the massive tracking every single keyword in every single right. country. It's just meant as a reality check uh, and a, a backup or a deeper information for your biggest queries. Okay, I mean, yeah, so I, now I understand it's supplemental to all this other stuff. You say, okay, we've got all the tracking we've always been using. Everybody's happy with that, more or less. We have specific queries that are really important, and that can be head queries or branded queries or the brand SERP itself, mm -hmm. um, which means we're kind of competing as well. Um, yeah. Oh, no, how terrible. I mean, we, I think... I think um, the, the 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 competition ends by the fact that I'm never going to come off the brand SERPs because I already found that there's so much to look at in brand SERPs that I I'm, 
I don't have time. I would love to look at loads of other stuff. I just don't have the time. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, it's a lot. I'm agreeing with you. It's a lot. So, and, but we're also trying to get a couple other aggregate scores in there. So for instance, um, we are gonna, right now we take all of the Google things individually, but we're about to add a metric that's like how much of this SERP is owned by Google. So right. how much is, is knowledge graph, map pack, anything that's not a blue link. So, sorry, excuse me, which means you're gonna end up with a kind of on SERP SEO measurement, i.e. when is Google not sending us um, or sending people to us, all those map packs, the, 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 knowledge, the knowledge panels, which I absolutely love. So you're gonna actually have multiple measurements is how much do I control? How yeah. much is Google stuff that is never gonna send me traffic and how much is actually stuff that's gonna pull in traffic for me? Yeah, yep. And so we have a we have the Moxie score, which is you and how great you are. And then there's the mess score, which is like how hard is mess is like, oh my God, the surface is a mess and we could never rank in here. Or if we rank in here, it's gonna be really hard. Sorry, because you're you're saying the word mess, M-E-S-S. -S. Yeah, mess. Uh, do you like do you mean mess as in uh, multiple different types of results because of ambiguity? Or mess in terms of you don't think that Google's built a decent SERP? um it's more of a we're, we're actually you make a good point we're looking for a new name for this one <laughs> but it's basically like how hard is it to rank in this serp and if it's like 90 percent owned by google and the other four percent is ads um and you've got six percent to work with then we're going to say this serp is a mess maybe focus on other queries Right. Okay. I had a really interesting experience with my Posio, which is a French company um, similar to Sambra who do tracking, and they're obsessed by how much you control. They go for how much, and they they break it down into different blocks. And it's a really, really lovely system. And one of the things that I was doing, I was looking into MOTs, very boring topic, um, but it was to point out to my client that on the really short head queries, because it's ambiguous, they actually are only competing for two of the ten theoretical spots yeah. um, and what was really nice is that I could open thanks to my posio I could open their eyes to the fact that they aren't realistically competing for it yeah. and, and, and 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 on the very local ones they could compete and and it is really saying actually I mean I'm, I'm not kind of sure it obviously breaks down different differently by industry how do you deal with that because obviously in this industry it was very specific yeah so that's one of the reasons that we wanted to uh, track the Moxie score and the MESS score because you, it's easier to have high Moxie on a really low volume or low competitive query. So that's why we wanted to have the two metrics is I'm killing it on this query and it's a tough query or it's not a tough query, right? Like yeah. if I wanted to own Cindy Plum wears a red shirt with Jason Bernard as a query, <laughs> I could do that. Um, and I could have like killer Moxie on that if I really tried it, uh, but it doesn't matter, right? And so, sure. yeah, I mean, with, with something like, I mean, um, uh, Lily Ray was using the example of, of, I think it was red shoes. I use Yellow Door uh, because Yellow Door is such a, 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 there are loads of companies called Yellow Door and I've never understood why. So when I track Yellow Door as a brand SERP, it's incredibly confused, but it's confused because there are multiple companies, but also multiple kind of ambiguous. I mean, am I looking for a picture of a yellow door, a video of a yellow door, or a song called The Yellow Door, or a movie called The Yellow Door? Um, and and coming back to your, your, your thing of M, mess, you were looking for something. Muddle, wouldn't muddle do it? It's a muddle. It's a muddle, maybe, let me write it down. I, th I think what we've just done is moved the needle a tiny bit forward, but there's definitely more work to be done on finding that name. But it's a muddle not in the sense that it isn't good, which is what I, might, I suggested earlier on. It's a muddle in the sense that there's a lot of different things competing and there's very little space for you. Yeah, yeah, there's no space for you. That's really what it means. Right, yeah. And, and I, isn't that more queries than we actually think? I mean, especially short head queries that everybody yeah. obsesses about. Yeah. It, 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 question then, is that a way to get the boss to stop doing our heads in about the short head queries to say, actually, there's, there's no point? There's no point. Yeah, that you want to know when there's no point so you're not banging your head against the wall. Yeah, brilliant. I, I, I had the example years ago of, of a local business who wanted to rank number one for paint. 
And you're going, if you rank number one nationally in France for the word paint, even if you get number one for paint and you get all the orders that you expect from paint, which you probably wouldn't because it's such an ambiguous query, how could you possibly fulfill all the orders? You're a tiny shop in a small street in a small town in the south of France and people don't hear that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're trying to kind of revolutionize or modernize how oh, yeah. CEOs are thinking about uh, about their job by letting them claim everything that they own rather than just tying success back to one blue one domain and blue links, um, but also getting a, a realistic idea of how easy or hard it's gonna be to improve a ranking or get something on on the first page and stuff like that. And, and one of the things that I think is important is we're giving everything that's in the SERP an actual rank, and then we put that right next to the traditional rank. So you can see all the things that aren't counted by most of the tools when they tell you a rank. Do, do, what do you mean by actual rank? You mean a pixel rank? Well, we have the pixel height, yes. We have that metric as well, but the actual rank is just like, this is the first thing on the page, which is an ad. This okay. is the thing on the page, which is also an ad. This is the third thing, which is a knowledge graph. And so all of those, like we wanna look at the real deal and see what's pushing stuff down. Because like, let's say we have actual, we have an actual rank of five, but a traditional rank of one. Is that something we feel good about? Or is that something where we say, hey, the game here is really in PPC and maybe we need to just displace one of those four PPC ads? Right, yeah, and then um, you've got a third thing, where obviously, which you mentioned is the pixel rank, which is if you've got a Google map pack, yep. you, you could potentially be <laughs> traditionally number one, actually yep. number five. and. Yep. Pixel 1,562 because the map yep. pack is so phenomenally big. Yeah, and then we set these up so you can run them daily, weekly, or monthly. And we haven't launched this yet, but it's on dev where we're graphing all of these things. Oh, right, because one of the problems I had, I mean, I looked at, once again, my posio is where I started looking at this. Um, and it got very confusing very quickly because I had three different rankings to present to the client. How, how can we deal with that? Because trying to explain to somebody, you're, you're blue link number one, traditional, sorry, bl traditional blue link number one, uh, actual rank number five, but down at pixel 1,500 well below the fold. How can you explain that? I, I mean, I think the answer is graphs. People, people right. understand graphs, or at least they think they understand graphs. <laughs> uh, and uh, as SEOs, we definitely should understand graphs. Uh, but then also having the data and the the reality style metrics to back it up. Right. Okay. And and you talk about the control. I mean, obviously, social accounts is control. My own site is control. Uh, do you do you measure the pixel space that I control compared to the pixel space on the page? Because I thought Mobile Moxie initially did that, or part of Mo Mobile Moxie did that. Well, that feeds into your Moxie score. Right. Okay. So, so the Moxie and, score, what, what's the Moxie score made up of? Now you've just opened the question to me. <laughs> so it's it's um, it's a score based on how much you control. So you have to go in and claim things if they're you. We When we do an intake, when we set up a new account, we get you. We try and get you to put in your Facebook and your Twitter and your LinkedIn so that we can already catch those. But then if there's a website, we, we show a question mark and we let you claim it if it's you. Um, and so that can mean, like, let's say you're a restaurant and you got in a top 10 list and that top 10 list is ranking. That's up to you whether you want to claim that or not. Is that competitive or is that positive? Because I think there's there's a lot of missing discussion on bi-directionality, right? Sometimes things can be good and bad or bad. Right, just because so so we let you claim that that's up to the SEO or the, the business owner. Um, but the Moxie score takes into account what's you and how hard was it to get, how much pixel space does it take up, and how high is it on the page. Right, okay. And then that gives you just one number that you can you can communicate and all the details you, you communicate that to your boss, and then all the details is what you need to worry about. Right. So it's a number out of 100, just like a, a school test. 
Um, and uh, the more of the SERP you have, uh, the closer you are to 100. If you have nothing on the SERP or haven't claimed anything, then your maxi score is zero. So it only really works if you really want to set up the brand profile and claim, claim things. Uh, but it does give you a little bit of flexibility as to deciding, is this good for me because I mentioned or is it not good enough and we don't want to claim right. it as a success? Well, I mean, one of the problems I think we all have is we're lazy and we kind of think, oh, I should just be, go be able to go in and it would immediately recognize what I control, what I don't. And even just clicking on things as I claim, 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 claim is a lot, something that a lot of people won't do is that setup, um, which, which is a, a mistake. Um, well, I mean, I get it. And we have an intake wizard to try and help with that. Um, and so for instance, we can ingest or soon we'll be able to ingest a GMB. So we'll know every single time it's you in a map pack um, or it, so you don't have to claim all of those. Uh, we can we can get your knowledge graph um, in the intake wizard. But remember that hopefully if you're doing a good job with SEO, these things are going to evolve and you're going to get new mentions, new links, new features, stuff like that. So we just want to make it easy once you're set up to add these new things. Right. In okay. Um, right. Well, two, two questions. Well, the first one is the knowledge panel. Um, how much control do you think people have over the, their own knowledge panel? That's obviously a brand SERP question in particular. Well, I think, I mean, you know more about this, but, but um, I would no, say... No, I mean, I'm intrigued because you mentioned it as something you can claim as your own. Yeah. Shouldn't you be able to? Like your yeah. business, this is me. Your personal knowledge graph, this is me. Right. Okay. So it's a question of this is talking about me rather than I control it. Yeah. Right. Okay, mate. Sorry, I was I was misunderstanding very slightly, kind of what it is you were you were you were talking about because Cali Cube's all about control um, and quality rather than actually is it talking about the brand because on brand serps, except for the ambiguous ones, we're always talking about the brand. So the question of is it about me is redundant, as it were. And the second question is, I was talking to someone I can't remember the name of the company, and I I hate myself for it, uh, but he's somebody who comes from marketing who's doing something quite similar, but looking into the page behind the result and saying, is the brand mentioned in the page behind the result? Which so would- we have that in a different tool. Right, okay, go ahead. Oh, that tool is called the Pagescope. And so um, you can put in your top pages or your top page templates that you wanna evaluate. Uh, we capture the, uh, the source code, the rendered source code, we have a diff checker, um, and we're about to add um, natural language API onto that so we can lift all the text and get all the entities out of it. So you're looking at, at mentions, at, well, obviously entities, and then obviously mentions in the page behind it, but it's not part of the Moxie score. No, it's separate. Okay, and the, the use is completely different in, for you? Uh, the use there is like tracking changes. So for instance, the, the obvious use case would be like, I want to track, let's say you're at a huge, huge company and you're the lead SEO, but that doesn't mean anything to the release schedule and the developers change whatever they want whenever they want. Right. Uh, so you want to see uh, track changes to the homepage over time. Uh, right. so set up the home page, we capture the code, we can show you the diff checker on a single snapshot, um, and then we're about to launch a comparative, you know, what changed between the code today and two weeks ago. All right, so uh, a way of keeping a check on your own pages in terms of the fact that developers keep changing things without being asked. And, uh... Yeah, but, but the thing about that one is you, it, you're not limited to just your domain because that's the old way of doing things. So you can pop in, um, and your competitors' pages and track their changes. You can pop in places where you're mentioned and see how long that story where you're mentioned stays live on the homepage, uh, whatever you want. And you can also pop in uh, any of your GMB landing pages. That's another reason we're ingesting GMB, or we're gonna ingest GMB, is you can track how all of your GMB landing pages look like, and you can track your uh, if you have the short link to your knowledge graph, you can put that URL in there and track knowledge graph changes. Right. Okay. So, I mean, it, it's tracking all the changes on the summit. I mean, this is, for me, I'm, I'm hearing on SERP SEO. I mean, we're looking at what is Google presenting as opposed to what traffic it's actually driving to yeah. us. I mean, and uh, but that's a whole big debate. Uh, uh, 
uh, a problematic debate. I mean, on surplus SEO, is it something you find to be frightening for the future of businesses or something that we're just going to have to deal with? I think it's what it's what we're going to have to deal with. And, and from a mobile perspective, it's what we've already been dealing with for a while. Mm. Um, as people on mobile click on what's interesting, what's got a graphic, that's why when you compare mobile and desktop SERPs, mobile SERPs almost always have more images, more expandos. Mm. People stay in the SERP and you can look at, you know, the, the data that Rand was publishing uh, when he had all the, the jump shot data uh, that people aren't necessarily always clicking through. And yes, that's uh, a threat to how we've done SEO in the past, but that's why Mobile Moxie is here to say like, this has changed and we're gonna help you with the new reality. And, and the new reality is kind of like Google's a, a free branding platform where I get free advertising. I had John Morabito um, in New York. We had a, a lovely steak dinner in some New York restaurant that he paid for. I owe him a dinner if he's listening or watching. Um, talk, talking about if we, if we can change our perspective and say Google is actually, it's their users, not ours. If we look at it as a free branding opportunity, is that kind of a reasonable way of, of perceiving it? Yeah, I think so. I think that there's um, there's some mistake in thinking that you're entitled to anything yeah. from Google. Um, it's their company, it's their search engine, it's their traffic, they can do with it what they want. I do think that there is some some problem and some tension in the way that they're lifting all the information and representing it, um, but you know the 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 research has found that when they do that, you do get more traffic in the end, mostly, not always. So I think we need more transparency in that. Um, do, doesn't that push us towards uh, to take it off Google and push us towards more the idea that we should be communicating? I had um, Barnaby Winter who was saying when people visit your website, they're fifty seven percent. He used the, the number 57, which strikes me as incredibly exact, but it's a lovely number because it gives me something to say. 57% decided to do business with you. So you've got more than half chance of converting them because they've seen your brand message everywhere else. So what he's saying is there is no point in re-explaining to them what your brand message is, what your convincing arguments are, because they've already seen, obviously you, you need to do it to a certain extent, so we end up with this off-site SEO, let's not talk about on-cert, but off-site, going to social media, going to YouTube, going to Medium, going to Crunchbase, going to all these platforms. How does that sound to you? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's spot on because like, let's say that um, someone or some brand um, wants to rank for a keyword uh, and what they know is that Twitter is already ranking well for that keyword. Right. If you just put out a tweet from your branded account that has that keyword in it and your Twitter account has enough followers and whatever, you can be there position one with minimal work just by sending a tweet, right? The the social media platforms already have so much ranking potential and, and you know such strong seo profiles that pushing stuff out from there sometimes is the fastest cheapest way to get your brand associated with a keyword even though it's not on your domain it could link to your domain mm. your could well, which comes comes back to, I was on Authoritas' webinar series thingy, Tea Time SEO, which is brilliant if anyone wants to watch it. Uh, I, and they asked me to talk about content. I was going, well, I don't know much about content. I was going, go on, talk about content, please. Um, actually, they didn't say please. But anyway, um, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a different question. For Tea Time SEO, I will always be present. And we would, they, they said, what about content? And that was part of why I, was, I ended up saying, I, it, I struggled to figure out what I could say, and that was a lot to do with it, is saying, if you can rank with Twitter, that's great. So create that content for Twitter, pull it back onto your site. And your site doesn't need to rank. You can rank with Twitter, you can rank with Facebook, you can rank with YouTube, you can rank with Medium, and that your content can potentially live for a large part on other platforms and just pull back into your site. 
Yeah, or relate back to your site or link back to your site or whatever. But this this idea of doing everything on one domain and not yeah. uh, hoarding your awesomeness is not as effective as spreading it widely. Well, I'll tell you one thing. That's what I was trying to say, but you just said it loads better. Thank you very much. I should have said moxie. You shouldn't hoard your moxie. <laughs> it relates back to our tools. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, we, we we can we can end it there because you shouldn't hoard your moxie. Has to be the key phrase of this entire thing. You've got your moxie. Don't hoard it. Thank you very much, Cindy Crump. I'm just going to quickly announce for next week. We've got uh, Melissa Fash talking about uh, content focused Google updates, and I invited Bill Slowski because I couldn't resist it when I saw his article in Search Engine Journal about knowledge panels and how they're triggered. Um, he's such a lovely guy, so smart. Uh, so I've got a double bill, and the joke was unintentional. I only realized that it was a joke when I sent him the email. Um, so I've got a double bill next week. Absolutely wonderful. Cindy Crumb this week, that was absolutely perfect. I think that was A, informative, B, interesting, and C, uh, I got a scoop. I've never yeah. had a scoop before. I haven't even made a video about the Maxi score yet. So get right. on it. Brilliant. The first scoop for Jason Barnard in over two years. Thank you very much, Cindy. You've you've made me a happy man. A quick goodbye to end the show. Thank you, Cindy. Bye-bye.